Hello, my name is Daniel Jacoby. I'm a cardiologist at the Yale School of Medicine and the director of the Comprehensive Heart Failure Program. I also had the privilege of being an investigator and a member of the steering committee for the Explorer HCM study, which will be presented today at the European Society of Cardiology. The Explorer HCM study examined the use of Mavicamptin, which is a novel first-in-class myosin ATPase inhibitor in the treatment of patients with symptomatic left ventricular outflow tract obstruction and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Prior to Explore HCM, treatment of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with symptomatic outflow tract obstruction was limited on the medical side to use of beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and sometimes disopyramide. And on the interventional side, to use of alcohol septal ablation or surgical reduction therapy, septal myectomy, for patients who are New York Heart Association class three. To date, there has never been a large placebo-controlled randomized trial to study any disease-specific therapy for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. And there remains an unmet need in this population to improve the therapy. This study, was a phase three double-blind placebo-controlled multi-center trial occurring in 13 countries around the world. It was conducted over 30 weeks and 97% of patients completed the study. The cohort was 251 patients, which is the largest HCM study ever tested with 123 patients randomized to Mavicamptin and 128 patients randomized to placebo. Let's talk about efficacy. In this study, 37% of Mavicamptin treated patients achieved the primary composite endpoint with statistical significant and clinically beneficial effects. The primary composite endpoint was designed to specifically demonstrate benefit, both in terms of New York Heart Association class and peak VO2 measured by cardiopulmonary exercise testing. And it's important to remember that these results were seen in patients already receiving the best available care at many of the top HCM centers around the world. Mavicantin treated patients saw an improvement in peak VO2 of 1.4 milliliters per kilogram per minute, whereas the placebo treated patients had no change in peak VO2. And 65% of Mavicantin treated patients improved by greater than or equal to one New York Heart Association class, more than double the placebo rate of 31%. Importantly, post-exercise LVOT gradients reduced from 86 millimeters of mercury to 38 millimeters of mercury in the Mavicamptin treated patients. While for placebo, the change was negligible with a change from 84 millimeters of mercury to 73 millimeters of mercury. Nearly 75% of the Mavicamptin treated patients reduced their LVOT gradient below the guideline-based criteria for invasive intervention, which is 50 millimeters of mercury, compared with 21% in the placebo group. And nearly 57% of Mavicamptin-treated patients reduced the LVOT gradient below the guideline-based criteria for diagnosis of obstruction, which is 30 millimeters of mercury. And this was seen in only 7% in the placebo group. To add to this, 27% of patients on the Mavicamptin group were both below the guideline-based definition for obstruction, that is grade, gradient less than 30, all gradients less than 30, and reported no symptoms, that is New York Heart Association class one. And this was only achieved in one patient in the placebo arm. Treatment effect across all endpoints, including post-exercise LVOT gradient and New York Heart Association class, was consistently beneficial across all pre-specified subgroups. That includes age, sex, BMI, baseline EF, New York Heart Association class, beta blocker use, and NT pro BNP and genetics. Patient reported outcomes were assessed using the KCCQ CSS and the HCM SQ shortness of breath scale, which is a new measurement that was introduced, particularly for looking at hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Both measures reflected improvements in symptoms, function, and overall health status. These changes were above the thresholds for clinical meaningfulness, and all were statistically significant. 
Very importantly, biomarkers of myocardial wall stress and injury demonstrated significant reduction in the treatment arm with reduction in NT pro BMP of greater than 80% vis-a-vis the placebo and reduction in high sensitivity troponin of 41% greater than the placebo group. This obviously raises the consideration that there may be some disease modifying effects for treatment with mavicamptin, but we cannot draw that conclusion at this time and further exploration is going to be necessary. We hope that we will gain some insights into this in the future, looking at the CMR sub-study of Explore HCM in patients who received MRIs both before and after treatment, and also looking carefully at the echocardiographic data that arises out of this study. Importantly, there were no serious events of heart failure occurring in the Mavicamptin group. Overall, nine patients, seven in Mav- on Mavicamptin and two on placebo, had a transient decrease in left ventricular ejection fraction to less than 50%. Five patients, three on mavicamptin and two on placebo, had protocol-driven temporary treatment discontinuation for LVEF less than 50% during the 30-week treatment period with a mean EF of 48% in that group. The LVEF normalized in all patients and they resumed treatment and completed the study. Four additional patients on mavicamptin had an LVEF less than 50% at week 30, range 48 to 49%. That was the last treatment visit echo. The LVEF was confirmed to recover to baseline after the eight week washout period in three of the patients with the fourth patient undergoing a significant procedural complication during atrial fibrillation ablation. Overall, six patients, three on mavicantin and three on placebo met predefined criteria for changes in QT interval corrected by Friedrich's formula and underwent temporary discontinuation followed by resumption and completion of treatment. There were no temporary discontinuations for mavicantin plasma concentration greater than 1,000 nanograms per milliliter. Overall, treatment with mavicantin over 30 weeks was generally very well tolerated with a safety profile similar to placebo. In conclusion, The Explorer HCM study is the first of its kind and the largest hypertrophic cardiomyopathy placebo-randomized treatment study using a novel disease-directed therapy to treat hypertrophic cardiomyopathy with left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. It met its primary and all its secondary endpoints and shows interesting findings in the exploratory endpoints of biomarkers.